This week we have something very big and very orange in the driveway. The Ford F-150 Raptor. We are now on the third generation of the Raptor and I've gotten to take one off-roading briefly, but now we'll be spending a full week living with the F-150 Raptor, seeing what it's like, the new interior, some of the exterior details, what it's like to use on a daily basis. We're actually about to pack up the truck with some stuff. We're heading downtown for the Chicago Auto Show. So it will be parked in the parking garage at the hotel for a few days, but then we'll have the weekend, pick it back up. We are taking, it's about an hour-ish drive downtown. It's uh, currently warming up with remote start. We'll load everything up and start this video off. Keyless entry unfolds the side view mirrors. Unlocks, so we got a Ford Performance graphic in the middle right there. Go to, oh. Start animation. It's hidden by the remote start thing, so I'll capture that later. All right. Built for tough. EcoBoost V6. I can assure you that this other Ford Performance product, the Shelby 350R, sounds a lot better. This would be a good two car solution, two car garage. I know a lot of people do it. They have a Raptor to daily to haul stuff around, to handle crappy roads, and then they have a Shelby for their fun car. We can easily fold up the second row seats. They're a 60-40 split. Just grab it, raises right up. Gives us a nice flat load. Well, mostly flat load floor. There is a little bit of a step right there, but put stuff in there. And then to lower it back down, there's a strap right here. Pull that, you can put the seat back down. We have wireless Apple CarPlay. So my phone's still in my pocket. I linked it up yesterday, uh, that's always handy. And then the right side of the sync screen, you can have all these different cars for so fuel economy, averaging 15, pro power on board, so we can cycle through that zone lighting. We've got all these different card options. That's a really nice usage of a larger screen because really CarPlay just needs this left side. It does not need the full screen. It'd just be wasted space. So that's handy. Currently in two high, so obviously we have four wheel drive. Push to, uh, what is this, push to change or push for locking and differential? Uh, locking differential and elevatable in two high, that makes sense. Um, Heated and cooled seats, heated steering wheel, massive fixed paddle shifters. Ooh, they're metal, listen to that. That's nice. Got the plus and minus machine out of them. They extend down too. Cold to the touch, nice metal with texture behind it. I like that. Full digital cluster, the red leather mark at the 12 o'clock point on the steering wheel. With that, let's uh, head off. Of course, with anything involving downtown Chicago, I have been in stop-and-go traffic for the last half hour. So we've been using the driver assistance systems on this Raptor. I don't think this has Blue Cruise, but it still has a pretty good system. Uh, you have to keep your hand on the steering wheel. You see this full digital cluster, really cool graphics. See the green light up for what my cruise control speed is set at, adaptive cruise control distance, lane keeping and everything. It's uh, It does quite well. And when it comes to a stop, it will auto resume. I think it will time out, but if it's a brief stop, it will auto resume. And it's been doing a pretty good job of all of this. Getting close to downtown, we're almost at the hotel. We gotta check in, unload this truck full of stuff. Hope the Raptor fits in the parking garage. This thing is big. Raptors are not parking structure friendly. This is my third parking spot. I had I had parked down there, but it was literally wider than the spot and just hanging out. So find a little corner spot. Height, a little concerned because there was a sign that said six foot ten clearance above, and the Raptor I believe is taller than that. Uh, but we're here now. <laughs> so unload, and uh, the Raptor's gonna be parked for a couple days. So we'll pick this back up this weekend. Back in the Raptor, have a little bit of a drive. The Chicago Auto Show media days are over. So, we get to spend some more time with this F-150 Raptor. It's actually a really nice evening. The weather cleared up a bit. We can see the sun. This truck is a little too big for being in downtown. <laughs> We're on Lower Wacker, so we can hear the active exhaust of the Raptor. It's a decent sound. <laughs> Test out the paddle shifters. It kind of sounds like a GTR, actually. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's got this new, like, company exhaust thing. It cannot match the TRX in terms of sound though. <laughs> I 
that makes a decent sound. The Raptor is big, which means going into parking garages downtown is not the most enjoyable thing. I don't want to scrape this gorgeous orange paint job, fold the mirrors in. It's also very tall. <laughs> We're just at one of the hotels downtown we have to park and I hope it clears. I hope we fit, find a parking spot we'll fit in. You hear that very annoying continuous beep. That's because this is as far back as I can go, but the Raptor is still, uh, it sticks out a little bit. And also I am like as wide as the space. See, this is a struggle with a Raptor. I, I can't go back any further and pretty much the entire front wheel and axle and front end is sticking out. But I, I guess I could try to find another spot. It's also as wide as a spot where, yep, uh, the wheels are on the outer edge. That's just the way it is. That's, that's the life of a Raptor owner. I mean, I really couldn't go that much further back. Ah, it looks cool. <laughs> As this is a new F-150, we have the little table function. So you can press a button and the transmission lever will go down and then we can open this up. We have a nice table surface for working on a laptop, taking notes, you can probably eat at lunch here too. It is pretty handy. This is also awesome. I can just plug my laptop in up here. That is definitely convenient. Cold start on the new Raptor. Close the valves like immediately. That's weird, because I got into cold start once with the valves open. Huh. You never look at the airbag warning stickers, but this Raptor also has this warning, higher rollover risk. Avoid abrupt maneuvers and excessive speed with that little icon there. Yeah, with the really high center of gravity in these tires, the Raptor definitely <laughs> has a slightly higher risk. This 12 inch digital cluster is pretty cool. Just look at those graphics. They're super clear. A rendered Raptor on it. I like it. On cold start, once the valves close, this Raptor has like the most insane friendly neighbor mode. Listen to how quiet that is. Sounds like a vacuum cleaner, dude. It's like making no noise. Let's do an exterior walk around. On the back, we have again the big Ford lettering blacked out on this applique. The Raptor badge right there, F 150 on the other side. We do have the updated taillight shape. And then FP, I assume, stands for Ford Performance. Not sure what those are. Not sure why there's a QR code. The Raptor lettering here, the graphics on the bed. You can see the, the Fox live valve shocks in the back. Those 17 inch bead lock capable wheels. Again, these are the 35s. So the 37s would fill this wheel well out even nicer, but they're also quite expensive. On the fixed side boards here, we've got the Raptor logo etched in there. It's pretty nice. Helps you uh, get into the truck, especially if you're short. This is always a nice touch. Widen more aggressive fenders. It's not a monumental change in styling compared to the outgoing F-150 Raptor, the second gen. More like a evolution to the general styling. Obviously new headlights here. We still have the triple amber running lights because it's so wide. I, I talk about all the numbers in a review. It's like 96 inches wide or something like that. It's huge. We have rigid fog lights down here. It's very salty because I've been driving all over the place. And that's the exterior of the 2021 Raptor. We have Ford Performance scuff plates here. The Bang Olufsen sound system with the metal speaker grills that always looks nice and premium. And it sounds pretty good too. It's got a little B&O logo on the headrest. So maybe, is there a speaker in the headrest? Raptor logo embossed on the seats. A little bit more bolstering, but they're still really comfortable seats. Let's hop inside. Press the start button. Built Ford Tough. Raptor Ford Performance on the center screen. What's the point of having a Raptor if you don't make your own parking spots? There might have been some snow on this spot, but we just threw the Raptor into four low and up it went without a problem. <laughs> Honestly, this isn't even remotely a challenge for this beast. You can do so much more. We get to see a little bit of the suspension articulation on a pile of snow over the curb. 
<laughs> Final thoughts on the Gen 3 Raptor living with this truck for a week. Ford really did make the improvements where they needed to. This is the best Raptor. It's the best all around, the most comfortable, the best driving, capable. It's just a great truck to live with. No, it doesn't sound as good as a V8 would, like the first gen Raptor. It can't match the absurdity or the overtop fun of the TRX. We'll wait for the Raptor R for that. But just holistically evaluated, it's just a really, really good truck. It doesn't really fit well in places. Like, I don't think this would fit in my garage, and parking structures are a little bit stressful. But ignoring all of that, like, I can see why so many of my friends want a Raptor or they have a Raptor as a daily driver. It just, it works well. You don't worry about it. It's got the bells and whistles. It's got the capability if you want to take it to the dunes or off-roading or mess around in the snow. It'll handle inclement weather and road situations without a problem. And it has all the luxury and tech features you'd want too. Really, the only complaint, I guess, is it's massive and it's thirsty. But those are things you expect getting into a truck like the Raptor. I would take this over my Ram 1500 Laramie, officially. I did personally own a Ram 1500 Laramie, and that truck was almost as expensive as this. It was just under $70,000. This one stickers for 78 grand. So yes, it's a bit more expensive, but you get a lot more for your money. The Gen 3 Raptor is pretty phenomenal. Great all around. Super excited to check out the upcoming Bronco Raptor at some point. So that video is live of an auto show walk around with the chief program engineer for the Bronco Raptor. Obviously excited for a potential Raptor R. Uh, but yeah, those are my... That's my experience living with a 2021 Ford Raptor for a week. Make sure you check out the review also. Talk a little bit about how it compares to the TRX and more of the specific technical aspects of it in a formal review. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.